The case of the shooting death of 33-year-old Anthony Stanislaus is now before the Director of Public Prosecution. Stanislaus, an alleged unarmed pillion rider on a motorcycle, died after he was shot by a police officer in the Grand River area on the night of Friday, July 24th. Assistant Police Commissioner for Crime Vernon Foswa says the officer was sent on administrative leave while the police conducted their investigations. Well, the latest is that we've completed our investigation into the matter. We've submitted a complete file to the Office of Director of Public Prosecution. It was the file was actually submitted during the course of, of this week and um, we anticipate that she will review the file and make a determination as to what cause of action should be taken against the officer, if, if, if any. Um, in terms of, of, it may very well be that she may require us to do some further investigation based on her review of the file. But what the stage we are at at this point in time, the file was recently passed on to the Office of Director of Public Prosecution. The Denry incident was the latest controversial shooting of a civilian by police in St. Lucia. The litany of cases have sparked debate on the need for reform and the use of force, the investigation of police shootings by law enforcement, and the disciplinary measures in place to deal with such occurrences pending the outcome of an investigation. Fosua explains presently the ultimate authority on discipline is the commissioner of police. So part is the officer is the commissioner's deliberate judgment. He decides in a piece of, based on the information that is provided to him what course of action should be taken in a particular situation, and then based on the information that is provided, he makes a determination as to whether the officer should be suspended or not. The reliance on the discretion of the top cop, the ambiguity of policy rules, inquest, and the absence of an oversight authority have left many in the St. Lucian public confused about discipline and accountability in the force. In addition, critics argue the punishment meted out in some cases is inconsistent and disproportionate. First was sought to explain the difference between an internal administrative affair and a criminal matter. You see, in the case at, at Francis Jacques CDC building and in Grand River, those are those were generally criminal investigations, and criminal investigations really the, the intention is for the matter to be taken be, be, before the court. So in, before uh, uh, I don't know that we should rush to judgment before uh, the 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 appropriate authority, which is the DPP's office, make a determination as to makes a determination as to what should happen. In the case of the sto the police vehicle that was stolen, it was treated as a disciplinary matter. So as soon as the, the, the initial um, process has been done in what is referred to in police language as serving a notice on him, then there is already like a charge laid against him. So on that basis, the, the commission of police can make a determination that, look, we should, we should um, suspend the officer. But, you know, we need to understand the difference between the two. Recently, the Security Minister, Senator Guy Mayers, announced a formal procedure on the use of weapons by the police will soon come into effect. He says the Attorney General's office is reviewing the proposed document that will guide the process. Winston Springer, Jr., HDS News, Channel 4.